We're back talking Oregon, Georgia. Y'all, it is Tuesday. The mm. game is in sight. And today mm. we want to talk about the monster that we hope Georgia's offense against a pretty form- formidable defense. We're going to talk about that right after this. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, y'all? I am Daniel. That is Clint. We are the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. We are your team every day. Happy to be part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Happy to be part of Lockdown Atlanta. Thank you so much for listening, for downloading Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, for leaving us a rating and review. Thanks for watching on YouTube, for leaving a comment, for subscribing to the YouTube channel. All these things are tremendously helpful. It's game week. We are here. We are breaking down the Georgia-Oregon game that's coming up on September 3rd at Mercedes-Benz. Uh, yesterday on the podcast, we talked about the Oregon offense led by Bo Nix, a familiar foe to Georgia fans. Going up against the uh, Georgia defense uh, decimated with absolutely no returning talent whatsoever. And so uh, if you're interested in that conversation, you can listen and uh, go back and watch or listen to that episode. But today, Clint, we're talking about the flip-flop of that. We're talking about the Georgia offense against the Oregon defense. And I think Georgia and Oregon fans would agree – these are the units that each of these teams expect to be the anchors of their football teams this year, which for the casual college football fan is probably a bit of a reversal from what you would think. You think about yep. or you think about Oregon and uh, apologies, Oregon fans. You think no, about no Ch- apologies. You think about- you think about Chip Kelly. That's what you think about when you think about Oregon. If you're me, you think about Joey Harrington first, and then and how he wore that glove when he played quarterback. Like and, did he wear and that how in he college was, or just in the that, NFL? No, he wore that in college. And how he was the face of video game franchises everywhere. Mm. And then the Lions continue to lion all the way oh. through. Yeah, you're right. LaMichael James. You think of LaMichael mm-hmm. James. Yeah. This is I who mean, you think of. Yeah, you Marcus think about Mariota. offense. You think about yes. offense. Uh, yes. Marcus Mariota, I hear, maybe a dark horse MVP candidate this year. People are saying that. I don't know. Are people saying that? People are seem to be saying that. Um, what, look, you, what, you think what people are you talking to? Stop talking yeah, to them. I should stop talking to people. Just in general, I should stop yes. talking to people. Um, and yes. you, when you think about Georgia, you obviously think about defenses, but. Georgia's Georgia likes their offense this year. You and I really like Georgia's offense this year. Every single position, you go down the list, offensive line, tailback, wide out, tight end, uh, and we like Stetson Bennett a lot. So Yes, we do. We like this offense. Oregon really likes their defense, as they should. And so, to me, this is the most Interesting matchup. I think the most critical matchup is what we talked about yesterday, which is how Oregon's offense does against Georgia's defense. I think that's the most critical matchup in determining the outcome of the game. But I think this is the most fun matchup to talk about because it's the two marquees. So I'm going to let you get us started, Clint. Where should we start this conversation talking about our offense and Oregon's defense? I'm not going to go to where you want me to go, Georgia fan. I'm not going to talk about our tight ends against anybody because guess what? Our tight ends against anybody is a matchup nightmare. Okay. You can talk to me about Sewell all you want. You can talk to me about linebackers all you want. They can't cover in pass against these guys. Stop it. No. Stop it. Okay. Here's where I do want to go. We are very high on the offensive line. We think this is one of the best units. We think it's one of the biggest strengths Georgia has. We talk about Oregon having the strength of the offensive line. Uh, But I think Georgia fans, listen up here. Uh, Skill position, we're going to have the skill guys. But my gosh, this offensive line should be robust all the way through. 
But Daniel, I got a sneaking suspicion that Oregon has a couple of dudes that have been in the wings. Dan Lanning knows how to coach up the D. And I think his insistence on the trenches, we're going to get a real taste. If a half, one half of playoff championship football, Roger Jones, is going to continue, we're going to figure out really quick the guards. Cedric Van Prant and McClendon are the, are the absolute stalwarts. I don't have any concern about them at all. But that's but, not where the strength of the Oregon defensive front is. It's no, not it's on not. the edges this year. Kayvon no, Thibodeau, it's ain't, not. he ain't walking through that door. It's in the middle. It's yes, in the sir. middle of that defensive line. The guards, Cedric Grand Prant, I love. The guards need to, get a, need to be figured out. They need to be dialed in. They need to be ready to go right away. I'll just be honest with you. I am greatly concerned. I'm going to say it out loud. Please I'm do. greatly concerned about Georgia's Please. ability to run the ball against Oregon. I am greatly concerned about our and, ability to run the ball. And again, because now this is it, it plays into offensive line, defensive line. Uh, okay, I get that. I understand that. But it also comes into play with how our running backs play. Kendall Milton injured still don't know a great deal. Dejon Edwards knows how to hit a hole very, very quickly. I understand that. Kenny Mack does not so far. This is the thing. All of a sudden, I just listed one out of three running backs. Then we get down to Branson Robinson and possibly another kid who's a walk-on somewhere along the line. And it doesn't feel good that if we need five yards, that the, again, I, I was the first one on the train of the Zeus hate, where Zamir White was going to go ahead and get those five or six yards for you to start off and to keep a drive going. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, with the offensive line trying to get his footing with Tate Ratledge, trying to get back from injury with the, with the guard positions, all of a sudden you need a reliable running back to just get some yards from time to time. And right now that's an undecided for Georgia. Yep. And so you're right, Daniel, I pass. I, I have no concern because again, the Stetson Bennett this year has the biggest, greatest insurance policy in the entire world. It's the law firm of Bowers, mm -hmm. Gilbert mm -hmm. and Washington. Yep. Okay. That's, yep. that's the law firm. That's the insurance policy. And it's going to cash out every single time. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the run game, Daniel. Yeah. And I think it, again, it starts in that Oregon. It starts on that Oregon defensive line. It starts on the interior uh, with Dorless and, and the guys on the interior of the Oregon defensive line. And it, it really, to me is about Dan Lanning. It really, to me, is about you. You've made an upgrade at defensive coordinator. I know Dan Landing is not your defensive coordinator. He is, but Kirby's also not Georgia's defensive coordinator. So you read Correct. into that what you will. Um, you made a significant. You got. You went out and acquired the best available defensive coordinator in college football, and. Good for you, Oregon fans. It is going to serve you well, and you're going to pay dividends. And guess what? The cupboard is full of great defenders for him to – because as we said, Mario Cristobal really stinks at winning important games. Yes. Really good at getting five, four- and five-star players to come to his university. So um, that's there. Dan Lanning's there. The talent is there. I think that's where it starts for me is a great concern with Georgia's ability to run the ball. All right. We're going to talk more about this game uh, and uh, talk about the passing game. We're going to talk about the linebackers, the secondary for Oregon, all of that coming up. But first, uh, Clint, what are we what are we telling the people about? I don't Bet know. online is their Bet sports online. book that's experts. They are fantastic. Yeah. They're the best. It's where Daniel and I go. If you didn't get locks in before, you need to go ahead and get locks in this week because Daniel and I did make you money. Although Nebraska screwed us all over. Scott rest, Frost. I just the man. By the way, ask me if I'm ever betting Nebraska again. Go ahead. Go ahead. The answer is no, definitively. They are dead to me. Scott Frost is dead to me. Bet online. They're not dead to me. They're fantastic. No. They're the and only this sports week, book. So Ooh. many locks. There's we have Thursday might wind up just being 40 minute episode of just I it's going to be fantastic. Cannot wait. So many Bet online, your sports book experts, the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs, Locked On Podcast, Locked On Atlanta, which we're all a part of. Get over there right now. Bet online, your sports book experts. Uh, all right, Daniel. J passing game. 
Well, let's talk about these linebackers for a okay. Word, because okay. it starts with Noah Sewell. He, he's he's a household name. He's a nationwide name. He's incredibly talented. He, you yes, got this he is. kid, Justin Flo. Is he healthy? Is he is he fully back from all of his all of his injury concerns? Seems like he is. The idea of these two guys playing together, which they really haven't spent a ton of time playing together. No. The idea of these two guys playing together, and then they got this Funa kid who is, in his own right, a, a future pro prospect. It reminds you of a linebacker room, Clint, that Uh-oh. I recently saw on an episode of Georgia Wins the National Championship that I was watching. That's not a far stretch. All you Georgia fans saying, no, no, no. Look, go watch the tape. These guys are the real deal. Like they can, they ball. can bang. Now, again, I said yesterday's podcast. I, I, little, I did a little tease in the third segment. They're not going to be able to run vertically with our tight end room. Again, who can? But especially them. The best these guys are is attacking the football. Think Channing Tyndall. y'all. Mm-hmm. That is what these guys are made of the mold from. And that's very important to understand because they're going to come attacking. They're going to come with bad intentions. And y'all, they can bang. If Georgia can't run the football, Clint, to me, yes, Georgia turns to the tight ends in the passing game. But to me, if Georgia can't run the football, the most important player in the game, other than Stetson Bennett, which is very obvious. He's the most important offensive Clear. player in every game for Georgia. But to me, the most important player in the game, if Georgia can't run the ball, and I and I fear that, I said, is Ladd McConkey. I think he now becomes the safety blanket. He now becomes, you're going to see him in the end around game, I think. You're going to see him creatively trying to, you're going to see him in the screen game. You're going to see some bubbles out on the side. You're going to see them trying to get guys the ball in some like simulated yep. run type plays, some free yards. That's what you're going to try. Georgia's going to be trying to get because are they going to take shots down the middle with guys like uh, Darnell Washington? Of course they are. Are they going to take shots down the side with guys like A.D. Mitchell and Lad McConkey at other times and – of course they are, but you got to have some version of a four yards, five yards, six yards, seven yards. You got to have some version of that to keep drives alive, to keep the ball moving. Stetson has shown he can play that game with people if that's the game they want to play with him. And I think Georgia might be seeing a lot of deep safeties. Yes, they will. And seven man boxes that Oregon says you can't run on this, and a little bit of some soft coverage from some corners. Look, we we know the playbook for Dan Lanning as well, y'all. Like, yeah, we saw it. We we know what it is, and that is what it was. And now, granted, we had an all world defense to do that with an all world defensive line and linebackers like a bang. They have linebackers and one all world. Defensive linemen, maybe two, depending on how that all goes. So we know the playbook. We know the blueprint. That's what they're going to want to do. They're going to get to get hat on a hat. They're going to want to load up the box. They're going to challenge you, and they're going to keep safeties deep. And, yes, the underneath, the zone, Daniel, the reads. And this is why this is so crucial, having a, a guy like Stetson come back this year. This is crucial. The communication and the expertise to know when Lad's going to sit down in a soft coverage when mm. Dom's going to sit down in the soft coverage, when A.D. Mitchell is going to do that option route and he's going to go in, these mm-hmm. are crucial that Stetson already knows. He's on the same wavelength as guys. This is the the stuff that we need to see on Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, I want to talk about the secondary for Oregon and, and um, some of this other stuff, but I think there is the other aspect to Stetson Bennett on Saturday that we have speculated all off season might be, it might become a more prevalent part of the playbook is the Stetson Bennett run game. That's Tuck the that part. Thing. Tuck that, that thing, Stet. 
if you're not able to run the ball the traditional way, we mentioned bubble screens, we mentioned end arounds. The quarterback run game is another non-traditional way to run the ball. And if Georgia needs it, and I suspect they might, yes, that's where they might turn on Saturday to get it. All right, let's come back. Let's talk about this secondary for Oregon and how Georgia can attack the Oregon defense. We talked about the things they're not able to do. Let's talk about what they are going to try to do on Saturday. What are they going to so, do on Saturday, Daniel, in the past game to attack the Oregon Ducks? Well, it's this, the secondary is the weakness of this team. They have some experience. They have some guys that have played. They're they don't not got great. bangers. They don't got they're dudes. Not, they're, not, they're not that great. And so from an outside perspective, if you're an Oregon fan, you're watching this podcast and you're thinking to yourself, that's fine. Georgia doesn't have great receivers either. They oh. don't have... They don't oh. have great deep threats either. Oh. Clint, do we have great deep threats? Are there deep threats on this team? What if I was to tell you that <laughs> okay. one of the top quarterbacks in deep ball accuracy and explosive plays is coming back with all the receivers he cares about coming back <laughs> on deep pass plays? Daniel? Well, George Pickens is not coming back, so I think there's that. that. That's, that's true. That's true. Um, all of the receivers that were trusted to catch a game-winning touchdown pass in the national championship game on a deep ball, they're all yes, coming sir. back. They all, they all back. They all here, Daniel. Let me just tell you this. When Brock Bowers catches the ball Ooh. nine yards in front of the line of scrimmage hmm. in stride, let me explain to you what that is. That's a deep ball. You understand? Wait, wait for it, Hold because on. by uh -huh. the time he gets tackled, he's 38 yards down the field, Clint. That's a deep ball is what you just threw. See, and that's that's what I just don't understand about all of this and why the deep, the not press, the deep soft zone with a very aggressive front, which is what we anticipate. We don't an anticipate a lot of bump and run. We don't anticipate a lot of press man coverage. It sets up beautifully for our offense because we got guys that can get on the backside of you real quick. Test AD again. I dare you. Mm -hmm. I Lab, dare Lab you. Lab McConkey. Lab McConkey. I just dare you to test Lab because that play action. Dejon Edwards back there. He go, mm. says he's going to hit that. He's going to pop. He's going to put that ball in his hip pocket. He's going to look up down the field, and Lad's going to be streaking. And then yes, Daniel, this is this is the point. If you want to go ahead and do like a little veer, a little a little soft flag over to the side with a tight end with Washington, Gilbert, or Brock, eat all, any of them, all of them, all at once against these DBs, and you don't press, you play soft coverage. Now you have to tackle them. That's now it. you have to you have to catch them to tackle them. And that's doubly hard. You thought covering them in a route was hard. No, no, that's only phase one. Phase two and three, much harder. Catching up to them with speed and then bringing them down because you're the hunted. They aren't. That this is not a homer take. This is a no. genuine. This is a genuine take. If I am an Oregon fan, the number one most important thing that I need to see from my defense on Saturday to win the, to have a chance to win the game is really really good tackling in the secondary like really really good tackling in the, the secondary. shoulder the shoulder throw at the at the leg of any one of our of guys someone, on offense of someone that weighs 290 pounds and is running at you full steam no just it's not do going me to a cut favor, it do me a favor and don't do me a personal favor and just pretend like you never had that idea that's not going to get the job done. You're going to no. have to bring your lunch if you're Oregon, and you're going to have to bring down some very large, very physical football players who are going to be running with the football in their hands after catching a pass from Stetson Bennett. If Oregon can do that, and yes. they can keep the gains to less than five yards after catch, the yards after catch numbers will determine Georgia's ability to score points in this game. That's my that's my take. Look at yards after catch, and I'll tell you how many points Georgia scored in this game. 
Because if Georgia is completing a pass and the guy's being brought down immediately, I, I think that's going to be a tough. That's going to be tough for Georgia to sustain over a full drive, over a full game, to be able to continually move the ball down the field. When you can't run the ball, it becomes very difficult. Ask all of Georgia's opponents from last season. And again, maybe you're a Georgia fan, you're listening to this, and you think Georgia's going to be able to run the ball. It makes me incredibly nervous, our lack of our ability to run the ball in this game. And so I'm operating on the assumption that we will not be able to, which means we are going to need to produce some explosive plays in the pass game. You can get those by throwing it deep, but you can get those easier by throwing it to Brock Bowers, Eric Gilbert, Darnell Washington, and having them break a tackle and run for 20, 30, 40, 50 yards after the catch. Those are the numbers that are going to be critical for Georgia and for Oregon on Saturday. And he's gone. No, I'm still here. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm back. No, no, okay. no, no, no. no. Uh, you're, right, you're absolutely right, Daniel. You're absolutely right. These are, yeah, that, that's what, that's going to do it for this episode for the offense defense preview, Georgia's offense versus Oregon's defense. We'll be back tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we will be Ooh. giving our official prediction for this game. For it's this on game. the record. Uh, the Georgia Oregon game. God and everybody. It, There are no take backs on this. We're going to give you a score prediction. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about this game. That happens on Thursday. We will be back tomorrow, though, for lots more coverage on Georgia versus Oregon on Saturday. And we will see you guys then. See you.